Okay, hi guys, welcome to Biology Online with Annie van Vieren. Hi Year 12s, um, I hope you guys are really well. I thought that I would go through the 2020 paper with you on genetic variation and change. Okay, so, question one. P pedigree. Woohoo! Gregor Mendel carried out dihybrid crosses for the pea plant, Pisum sativum. Um, pea plant displayed a complete dominance inheritance pattern complete dominance inheritance pattern that means that we have basically it is either um, recessive or it's dominant that's it there's no in between okay the allele for round is dominant and the allele for wrinkled is small r that is recessive the allele for yellow is dominant and the allele for green is little y that is such a dumb one to use. Y and Y look the same. So I'm going to use G and G. Okay. Because Y and Y is just too similar. Now, the genes for seed shape and color are found on different chromosomes. Use the pedigree chart below to answer the following questions. The genes and for seed shape and color are found on different chromosomes. So they're telling us that because then we know that it's not linked. Okay. Use the pedigree chart below to answer the following question. So if you have a homozygous recessive, homozygous recessive, so that is going to be, what is our phenotype there? It's going to be green and wrinkled. Is that right? Yes. Green and wrinkled. And this one is homozygous dominant for both, so it's going to be yellow and round. Now remember, if you look at this individual here, they can only give a capital R. They cannot give a little R, because all they have is capital R's. So they will give a capital R there and a capital R there. And they can only give a capital Y and a capital Y. So they will give a capital Y there and a capital Y there. However, this individual can only give a little r. So there's the little r there, and there's the little r there, and a little y, there's the little y, and there's the little y. So they've given us that typical, we're going to go for the dihybrid cross, and now they will probably say that we're going to cross these two with each other. Okay, well, uh, probably you can see from the from the pedigree chart that that is the cross right there. Okay, so explain why the offspring in the F1 generation, so remember P is the parental, then F1 generation, will always have the genotype of R, uh, heterozygous R and heterozygous Y. So that's relatively easy. We just explained that. So you can say... Um, we're looking, and I'm going to speed this up um, on the video, so otherwise it takes very long for me to write these things, but anyways, so in, in all, it's basically, when looking at the, the parents, the one is homozygous, homozygous recessive, therefore, it can only give a little r and a little y. Um, individual number two is homozygous dominant, therefore they can only give a capital and a dominant Y and a dominant R. Okay, so the offspring will be a combination of that. They can only be big one, little r, big y, little y. Okay, so there are nine possible genotypes from the F2 generation from this cross between the F1 generations. Okay, so now we use FOIL. Remember FOIL? So FOIL says, we're looking at this one over here. Okay, and we're going to use the firsts, okay, foil is first, so that means our 
Y, and Y. So the first ones are the big R and the big Y. Then outside foil, outside now it is big R, little Y. And then we go inside and we'll have a little r and a big y and then we'll have lasts which is little r little y okay and we do the same for this side so again it's going to be please jump, jump around like that r y r y little r big y and little there you go, because they are the same. Remember, both of these gametes are going to be the same. Okay, so now we bring them across. So I'm going to take this guy first, and I'm going to just pull it down. And remember, because they're capitals, I'm just putting capital R, and then a space for the second one, capital Y. Okay, now I'm going to do... What the heck? Hmm, now I'm going to do the same for this one, but I'm going to leave two spaces because it is a recessive. Okay, in this one I'm going to leave a space and then a little r and then a big y. And then over here, little r space, little y. Okay, so r, y, r, y, y. Okay, now we're bringing these guys over here, we're bringing them across. So little r, little y. Okay, there you go. Now we can start counting them. So remember, if we look at the phenotype, phenotype over here is going to be... So our phenotype is either going to be, remember there's only four different types, so it's going to be yellow and round, or it's going to be yellow and wrinkled, or it's going to be green and round or green and wrinkled. So let's count them. Yellow and round. So this one is yellow and round. So that's one. Yellow and round, that's two. Yellow and round, that's three. Yellow and round, that's four. Yellow and round, that's five. Yellow, ooh, no. Yellow and round, that's six. Nope. Yellow and round, that's seven. Yellow and round, that's eight. No, no, yellow and round, that's nine. Great, so that's our nine over there. And remember the numbers that we're going to be expecting is nine, three, three, one. And you have to put the words in there, okay? Otherwise, if they ask you for that ratio, they will not give all your marks if you don't use the words. Now, yellow and wrinkled. Let's use a different color for that. Okay, so yellow and wrinkled. So we ignore all of this with the green ticks in them. This one is yellow and it is wrinkled. No, no. Yellow and wrinkled, remember big Y is the yellow. So we're looking for something like this that is yellow and wrinkled, yellow and wrinkled, yellow and wrinkled. Okay, so there's the three. And now, let's make it rainbow colored. Now we want green and round. Okay, so green and round is the two little Y's, but round is still the capital, so there's one there. Oh, it's a rainbow. And then green and round, that's two. And then these are all encountered. So just these two left, that's green and round. And now if you look carefully, all of them have been counted, except for green and wrinkled, and there it is. So that's the 9331 ratio. Let's look at the rest of the question. So the phenotype ratio, and we have to write nine um, round and yellow. I can't write with this. It doesn't work for me, sorry. 9 is round and yellow. Then 3 is round and green. And then 3 is 
wrinkled and yellow. And one is the homozygous recessive, which is wrinkled green. Okay, there you go. Now, fill in all the possible genotypes for the F2 generation in the pedigree chart below. All the possible genotypes. Uh, first one that we're going to look at is this one. Okay, so homozygous dominant. And then over here we can have homozygous recessive immediately. Okay. Now, we're also going to have, if you look at that, homozygous and heterozygous. Yes. So if you want to check what's up here, you can go, there's homozygous and heterozygous. Now the third one is heterozygous homozygous. And then you'll have a complete heterozygote. We have this one already. And then, let's just make this a bit smaller. You'll be able to see this on the paper, obviously. If I zoom out a bit. No, there we go. Please. last one in here is heterozygous homozygous, heterozygous homozygous, and then heterozygous heterozygous. Okay, so we're going to have big, little, big, little. Alrighty, moving along. Homozygous heterozygous, we have that already, homozygous, homozygous recessive. And then, okay, so we've done that one. Now that's a complete heterozygous, we have that already. Heterozygous, and then homozygous recessive. I haven't got that one yet. And then the next one is heterozygous homozygous. We have that already. Heterozygous, then homozygous recessive, and homozygous dominant. And we don't have that yet. And then the last one is going to be homozygous recessive and heterozygous. Okay, here you go. Easy peasy. So, section C. Use the simplified diagram below to discuss the process that occurs during meiosis that increases very genetic variation in gametes. Okay, so we're going to talk about meiosis. Okay, so let's look at all the steps here. First one we have is, you can see there's a big OR in there, and that OR tells us that it is random assortment. And we have to explain that. Then, if you look carefully, I don't see any crossing over in here, but we know crossing over also happens here and here. It's not a good diagram. Hmm. And if you look what's happening here, we have segregation one where it's pulling it to the sides, pulling it to the sides. So that segregation one is when it pulls the homologous pairs apart. And now it's going to pull the sister chromatids apart for the second segregation. And then you have four haploid gametes that are completely unique. Okay. And these gametes will then take part in random fertilization. Okay, so let's look at our question. A description of meiosis, an explanation of independent assortment, and label when it comes, and label when it occurs on the diagram. Okay, an explanation of segregation, and label when it occurs on the diagram. A discussion on how these processes increase genetic variation of gametes. Okay, so firstly, I think we've just done that. So that's segregation over there. And that is segregation over there. And then random assortment we have, and we put in um, crossing over. And then over here is going to be random fertilization. All right. Um, so, description of meiosis. Your description is going to be meiosis 
is only um, it's only for the production of six cells or gametes. And that's egg and sperm. And you get four unique sperm. Four unique um, haploid daughter cells. Okay, then we're going to talk about independent assortment. How it is independent independent whether it was now remember this was the grandmother and that was the grandfather's genes okay in the homologous pairs so when this individual here their parents gave half half and that's why they have two alleles of everything now you go independent assortment says the homologous pairs line up in the midline irrespectively whether it is paternal or DNA or maternal DNA and when we say that it is from the grandmother or from the grandfather and as you can see here here it's mixed and there it is not so that just means that it creates variation that way okay so I'm not going to write all of that down because otherwise this goes on too long your next part then is crossing over and crossing over we say that the yeah so just with independent assortment I just want you to write um, randomly left or right of midline um, irrespective of the chromosome being from maternal or paternal or paternal slash paternal origin okay man my writing is terrible today okay then the next part is talking about independent assortment it's interesting that they don't talk about this increased genetic variation of gametes um, yeah I still want crossing over here in as well so crossing over okay and crossing over is um the two non sister chromatids cross over at the chiasma and exchange pieces of DNA. Forming two new and here's a buzzword recombinant because they have recombined recombine I'm not sure about the spelling recombinant chro um, chromatids because they are now going to look like this where this one would be basically there that is our original one and this one was the one that crossed over remember that's our centromere but this one will now have a piece of the other one there whereas this one is going to be the recombinant and this one is going to be the non-recombinant Okay, 
And so what we now have is that this one is a chromatid that is different to this chromatid, which is different to this chromatid, which is different to this chromatid. Okay, and they're gonna and the first part is where we segregate the two homologous pairs and then we segregate the two sister chromatids because remember the over here this one and this one are sisters this one and this one are sisters okay um, so we talked about crossing over we talked about random assortment and we talked about segregation a lot so I'm not going to write that down you can just I've just mentioned it again now and then a discussion of how the process has increased genetic variation in the gametes so it's basically just a discussion where you're going to say by doing this it increases the variation because you have completely new combination of alleles in the um, recombinant DNA and also because of random assortment um, it the offspring will have chromosomes that are from either maternal or paternal but it's going to be a combination of the maternal and paternal um, chromosomes okay and then lastly random fertilization means that a random egg is fertilized by a random sperm which again contributes hugely to variation it is not predetermined okay so let's quickly look at the model answer okay so first things first all the gametes from that will have a little r and a little y and then all the gametes from that will have a big r and therefore the f1 generation has to be that heterozygote over there um, because during meiosis the parents alleles sorry it's probably a little bit small so the parents alleles um, segregate and pull apart equally into each gamete so, for achieve, you said that the allele for the parent gamete, so in other words, you refer to this one and that one, bang, and you accept upon its square um, cross for either gene. They didn't ask us to do one, but I will say that we actually did correctly answer it. And then for merit, explain why the offspring has a genotype of that using the concept of segregation and haploid gamete production. I would say that we answered that to a merit level. Next one. There's our dihybrid cross. And then there's the various different versions of it. And 9331, 9 round yellow, and so forth. So if you did the Punnett square correctly, you got an A. Or if you have 7 correct on the pedigree chart. Okay, that was these over here only seven of the nine you get another a and identifies the phenotype ratio as 9331 however please use the words in there then you get another a if you had on this pedigree chart all nine of them correct and you had 9331 correct you got another m that's so easy okay then now we get to the e part of the question and here's their and you can see there that we start off with the this is going to be um, interesting they start off with two cells but I think what they mean here is the or over there okay and you can see independent assortment is over there versus over here it's not the same so completely random whether it's on the left or the right and then we get to segregation and you can see there it's pulling apart the system um, homologous uh, homo homologous pairs and then we have segregation again where we pull apart the sister chromatids um, there's no image in here of crossing over so let me just read so meiosis is a type of cell division reduction division that produces sex cells or gametes sperm and egg with half the number of chromosomes or haploid as the body cell uh, in comparison to body cells it produces genetically unique daughter cells we said that all of that 
the process of independent assortment is where homologous pairs line up randomly during meiosis and I want you to write here left and right of the midline irrespective of parental whether it's from maternal or paternal okay then the alleles are reshuffled and different new combination of chromosomes are created in the genotype therefore the gametes have different combination of alleles and this increases genetic variation the process of segregation is where the homologous chromosome pairs segregate or pull apart and migrate to the cell poles during meiosis during segregation only one chromosome from each homologous pair is placed into the new cell during gamete formation alleles um, for each gene not alleles the sister sister chromatids separate so each gamete carries one allele per gene. Therefore, genetic variation is achieved or increased because each new cell has a different combination of its alleles from each other and only half the chromosomes. Do not accept different combination of genes. Don't know what they mean by that. Anyways, so you gave a description of meiosis. You described independent assortment. You described segregation. You indicate on the diagram where it took place, and you indicate on the diagram where segregation takes place. That is how easy it is to pass this. Then, for merit, you explained um, independent assortment, explained segregation um, in one from each pair going into each gamete, and explained independent assortment and explain that gametes are genetically different from the parents. In other words, half the number. And then for excellence, you discuss how independent assortment increases genetic variation in the gametes. Evidence to include homologous and random lineup, reshuffling, different combinations. Yes, yeah, so random lineup and chromosomes. Therefore, unique gametes increase in genetic variation. Also, a discussion how segregation increases genetic variation and then evidence to include pull apart separate one chromosome of the homologous pair per gamete therefore unique combination of gametes I think we did more than excellent so that's great and for A3 to pass this you needed three A's now let's see how many we had the opportunity to get so you can see there there's one two three four five there there and there's one two three four five so you had to have three out of ten to pass this question which is guys please all you need to if you just want to pass then just study your definitions over and over and over and over but i know i want you guys to do better than that because you can you have the ability we know that Okay, I'm going to stop the video here because it's getting long and then I'll do the next question. Okay, thank you very much. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.